Welcome to our channel my dear students. Today we are going to talk about the very important topic that is hybridization and structure of xenon fluorides. In which in this video we are going to talk about xenon difluoride, xenon tetafluoride and xenon hexafluorides. Okay. Right here so how we need to identify the hybridization and structure of xenon compounds. First of all, we need to identify the hybridization. So for that, uh, we need to get some idea about the hybridization tricks. So here, xenon is a compound. Xenon is a element. So here, uh, electronic configuration of xenon, as we know that it is a noble gas. It's an inert one. But uh, once upon a time, it was told as inert. But now the xenon, uh, compounds will give xenon will give a lot of compounds so that it will not be considered as inert it should we should not say it is a inert uh, gas it is always a noble gas okay right so here the xenon electronic configuration is like this uh, valence shell electron it has 5s to 5p6 so totally 8 electrons on its valence shell okay if we want to find out any uh, structure of the compound we need to identify the hybridization behind it okay so likewise here the xenon the ground state so here it occupies like this 5s2 two electrons are there p6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so everything is packed if you promote in its excited state if you promote one electron to this d that time the hybridization becomes yes 1, 2, 3 p orbital and 1 d orbital is existing. That's what we can calculate as sp3d hybridization. Are you able to understand? Once you find the sp3d hybridization, then the structure of compound predicted, it will be very easy. So here I'm going to give you the trick to find hybridization for xenon difluoride. So here, how many atoms are directly attached to xenon? Only two, two fluorides are attached, so that two. What about the valence electrons of uh, xenon? The valence shell, it has eight electrons. And here fluorine is a monovalent one. It's a monovalent one. So two fluorides are there, so two bonds are satisfied. What about the remaining electrons? So remaining eight minus two, totally six electrons. That is six electrons are there. Six electrons, which means how many pairs? So three pairs are able to understand. So six by two that gives three lone pairs. So here bond pair is two. The number of the atom directly attached to the xenon is two. And remaining you can subtract from these valence electrons. So what about that? So six and uh, six electrons are there. And if you want to calculate the pair, so divided by two. So here three lone pairs are there. So if it is five. So if it is total is 5, the number of bond pair and lone pair is 5. So we can be able to calculate very easily the hybridization. So here it's a trick to find out the hybridization. If the number is 2, if you find out the bond pair and lone pair, bond pair and lone pair addition is 5. At that time the structure may be, the hybridization may be sp3d. So here, according to that same category, so if the number is 2, if the bond pair, lone pair addition is 2, that time it has sp hybridization. If it is 3, sp2. If it is 4, sp3. If it is 5, sp3d. If it is 6, sp3d2. If it is 7, sp3d3 hybridization is there. Are you able to understand? Let's calculate it for xenon difluoride. So here, uh, this is the first one. That is a xenon difluoride. What is that? So here, uh, number of atoms attached directly. How many atoms are attached with xenon? Two. Valence electrons of xenon is eight. So bond pair, bond pair is two. Bond pair is two because two atoms are directly attached. So that is a bond pair. So we have to calculate valence electron. So valence electron is eight. So if you want to calculate the lone pair, what about that? So remaining el two electrons are bonded. So totally remaining six electrons are there. We need to calculate a pair so that six divided by two equal to three. So totally three lone pairs are there. Total number is five. If it is five, what about this hybridization? It may be sp3d. Are you able to understand sp3d hybridization? Are you able to understand? So here 
uh, if you want to find out the sp3d hybridization so we need to find out the structure so how it will be so let's check sp3d so here xef2 the hybridization is sp3d are you able to understand sp3d okay and if you want to write the structure so how it will be so here the uh, xenon i'll be writing okay and uh, i'm going to write two fluorides one is here one is here both should be in axial so why it should be in axial that i'll explain you so here uh, in equatorial position the electrons that is the lone pairs are arranged are you able to understand students so why we have to arrange it in equatorial and why the fluorides should be in axial because uh, these are all lone pairs okay they have a lot of repulsion so we have to fix the lone pair so with the large bond angles okay large bond angles if you look at the bond angle between this fluorine and lone pair what is that it is only 90 degree 90 degree if you look at these two so here uh, 120 degree that is what we can fix the lone pair in equatorial position are you able to understand so here if you uh, look at this okay and this is what the structure will be like this the expected structure if it is isp3 dehybridization the structure expected to be trigonal bipyramidal trigonal bipyramidal structure is to be expected but the thing is we have three lone pairs out there for the structure we should not include the lone pair okay that is what the structure is like this xc so here f and here also f now this bond angle is 180 degree that is what the structure is linear okay are able to understand students so the expected structure to be tri trigonal bipyramidal but here the structure is linear this is because of that three lone pair of electrons are able to understand students and next one is xcf4 so xcf4 how we can calculate xcf4 if you want to calculate the number of bond pair and lone pair how we can calculate so it will be very simple one so here uh, xcf2 we calculated according to that xcf4 we have to calculate number of atoms attached how many atoms are attached four atoms are directly attached to the xenon what about the valence electrons of xenon valence electron of xenon is eight so totally eight electrons are there so totally four bonds are there so remaining four electrons are there Re by two that gives two so totally two lone pairs so bond pair is four and lone pair is 2 totally 6 if it is a 6 what about the structure to be expected sp3d2 so octahedral structure will be expected that is a sp3 sp3d2 the structure is expected let's check uh, what is the structure if it is a hybridization is sp3d2 sp3d2 is the structure okay sp3d2 is the structure the expected structure to be octahedron but octahedral okay o c t a h e d r a l octahedral structure to be expected so here let's write the structure here xenon is there so if it is octahedral so let's check like this so here bond angles are uh, along with the xenon is 90 degree each so here uh, fluorite fluorite here it is a fluorite here it is a another fluorite what about the lone pass the lone pass will be placed here so two lone pass are there according to that uh, concept two lone pass and four bond pass are there so here uh, we need to avoid so here bond angle is 90 degree each 90 degree each so we can fix anywhere else so if you uh, eliminate the lone pair so what will be because we we should not consider it for lone pair for the structure so that so it gives square planar structure so expect a structure to be what is that 
octahedral but its structure is square planar square planar why it is a square planar because of lone pair repulsion according to vesper theory the electron electron repulsion is there so that uh, the structure is contracted from octahedral to square planar are you able to understand students and next one is xgf6 so how we can calculate xgf6 so here the number of atoms attached is 6 directly attached with the xenon is 6 six fluorides are there and valence electrons of uh, xenon is 8 okay number of bond pair is 6 what is the number of di atoms directly attached that is give bond pair so 8 minus 6 that gives only 2 2 by 2 that is 1 why we have to divide it as 2 because we need to calculate lone pair okay so here it gives number of electrons by 2 that gives one pair so number of electron pair is 1 total is 7 if it is a 7 what will be the structure so what will be the hybridization as we look at if it is a 7 sp3 d3 is a hybridization if you look at sp3 d3 it's a hybridization let's check what is the structure of xgf6 so from the data here xcf6 which has sp3 d3 hybridization so if it is having sp3 d3 hybridization the expected structure to be that is the pentagonal bipyramidal so pentagonal bipyramidal is a structure is expected but here if you write the structure here uh, xenon will be taken and um, here uh, if it is octahedral structure so you just consider so here these are all the pairs okay along with that one lone pair should be attached here or able to understand so here six fluorides are there one and here it is two and here it is uh, three fluorides and fourth fluoride and fifth fluoride one more sixth fluorides are there and the lone pair to be here okay are able to understand so now what is the structure is expected that is a pentagonal bipyramidal this is what the structure is expected this is what the structure is expected or able to understand pentagonal bipyramidal structure is expected but actually it has what about the structure so here you just look at so here uh, six fluorides are there okay so if you compare to xenon i'm taking so here one and two and here it is three and here it is four so fluoride one fluoride is there one more fluoride is there one more fluoride is there in all corners and top of that on top of that we have one fluoride and bottom of which we have one fluoride this is what octahedral what about the lone pair the lone pair if you look at the thing that is say for example so if you along if you write the phase of this uh, octahedron so one of the phase if suppose in this phase if lone pair is attached if lone pair is attached in this phase if the lone pair is attached what happen so it gives distorted octahedron distorted 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 octahedral structure distorted octahedral structure but the original structure is expected to be pentagonal bipyramidal because of that lone pair so the structure is getting distorted octahedral i think so you understand very well about that uh, hybridization structure of xenon fluorides thank you so much for watching please go forward to others to get benefit and don't forget to subscribe this channel thank you so much for watching thank you